Hello, YouTube. I'm David with the David West Channel. Well, today I want to talk to you about dishonest fire makers. YouTube is full of them. I can spot them pretty easily because of all my experience in fire making. But um, I wanted to give you some tips on how you can detect who is actually faking their fire making. And it happens for a variety of reasons. You know, the age old sin of pride. They want to show, hey, I can, I can make this fire easily and I can get ignition the first try. And a second factor is they may be trying to sell you all kinds of stuff. They might be able to, trying to sell you a half by six inch ferro rod, $22, uh, the knife with the uh, good 90 degree spine on it to scrape that ferro rod with like a Garberg for about 75 bucks. Uh, they might have courses they might be trying to sell you for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So some of these people have a stake in being dishonest. Um, can you imagine though, if let's say you convince people that you've got a great course and that you're a great fire maker and, and survival training and all, can you imagine if you get thousands of people that come and buy your knife, buy your ferro rod, decide to spend four or $500 for your course, then they're going to have to buy all the other tools and materials that they'll need for those courses. Then in appreciation of what they learned from you, you have a lifelong customer that's going to keep buying from you till the day they die. Can you imagine how profitable that must be? The reason that my videos are so long is because from the time that I start going for an ember until the time that I actually have flames coming out of the stove, I don't like to make any edits whatsoever. I don't cut away to some other scene. I don't go to, well, I do go to fast forward because there are time constraints. But if they have a long-term history of always one striking ignite, never missing fire, never missing the flames, uh, once they get the fire started on the ground, it never goes out. It just always grows and grows and grows. And then the next scene, they cut away and they've got a raging fire. They don't show you any difficulties in fire making at all they are dishonest. I want you to start looking at all of these fire makers from the biggest names that you could think of on YouTube down to the person that only has a couple of views on his video. Look and see when they choose to cut away. Look and see when they choose to cut away. If they cut away, let's say they're doing bow drill and they cut away just when there's, when they stop bow drilling, and you start to see some smoke, you cut away, and then the next thing you know, you see them have a, a red hot ember in the tinder bundle. You should question that. Um, people that are forever fast forwarding the process. You know, if you have a lot of fails, you can cut those fails up, but you can't get the scene. Let's say, let's say you got a piece of film up to here. You got another piece of film right here with a great big ugly fail in it. You could cut the big fail out, but you can't start the camera back and have these two backgrounds and scenes completely line up, but you can get them close. So if that's the point that you decide to go ahead and fast forward, you could slip it right by as if, hey, I watched him do the whole thing and he made, he made that ember, he made that ignition, he made that fire on the first try. The giveaway is always gonna be they cut away at the most important scene. They cut away at the most important scene. They were just blowing into the tinder bundle and then they cut away to a close up showing the tinder bundle going to flames. I made a video a couple years ago, sort of pertaining to the dishonesty that you see fire makers doing on YouTube. That one more was more to do with at the time there was people acting like hey I'm just gonna go out into these woods that I'm unfamiliar with and I'm just gonna gather up materials on the spot materials and then I'm gonna take and make a fire out of it no problem oh I just walked up on this dead standing 
I didn't know it was here. They're familiar with that. They're familiar with where their tenders are coming from. They're familiar with um, many times. They're familiar with how long it's been since it's rained. And it's just so dishonest to let people think, I can go into a strange set of woods and just make fire in 10 minutes, no problem. So I am telling you, whether it's me, at the critical point of going from, you know, first going for an ember until I get flames, even if it's me and you see me cut away, which occasionally I've done, uh, you should question what in the world, why did he cut away at such a critical point? Why did he cut away at such a critical point? Why did he cut away at such a critical point? You should question the tenders that people are using the bow drill sets, the hand drill sets that are people using. Y'all know that I take all of that stuff and I dry it in the back glass of my Camry. Do you think anybody else is gonna tell you that, hey, what I'm using here does not have the normal amount of moisture in it that's in the atmosphere? This is something I dried out in the microwave. This is something that I dried out in the back glass of the Camry. This is something that, I, that I've dried out. People aren't telling you those things. There's every kind of way that uh, they can deceive you on YouTube. You look for those people who cut from one scene, from one critical scene to the next scene and they haven't established ember or they haven't established fire. You'll start seeing what I'm talking about. Here's my bow drill bearing block. We're gonna have to make some fire in this video. Can't just be a rant. So let me scrape it up and ignite it with my ferro rod. I just changed out my ferro rod. I just changed it out because my other one was thin enough to break on me. So, something else, let me tell you. This coating, the first time you scrape it, the first one or two times you scrape it, because of that coating, you're liable not to get any sparks. Don't take and just waste that coating. Don't, take, don't go off in the air and just scrape off that coating. Scrape those shavings and that coating down inside your tender because when you do get sparks, it will ignite those shavings. How many times have we seen people waste those shavings right there? Or even when it's just uh, corrosion and stuff that is built up on the ferro rod, they so want you to see that, hey, I can one strike ignite it. <laughs> they'll, take, they'll take and they'll waste several scrapings off into the woods before they actually use it to ignite tinder. Don't do that. Put the shavings in the tinder bundle. Now, these two holes, two divots, are not so deep, I can keep on using those two divots. So let me, let me uh, take some of the thickness out on this end of the fat wood. To be able to get a good scrape on your ferro rod, you want to make sure that you have removed all of that fat wood residue. I still see some stuck on there and I cannot scrape it off of my fingernail, but it's clean enough to get a good deep scrape on the new ferro rod.
All right, y'all. Appreciate you joining me on this one. We'll catch you on the next one.